Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I hope you're doing great and we're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the North Atlantic. As you can see, there is a new area which is marked over in the Bay of Campeche. So we're going to be looking at that as well as 92L, which continues to try to get itself together, maybe becoming a tropical depression by the middle of the week. And also there's that tropical wave in the Caribbean, which continues to produce some periods of heavy rainfall, which may impact Jamaica through today. So we'll be looking at that coupled with what is going on over in the eastern pacific the latest on the two active tropical storm and so let's go ahead and we'll be kickstarting with the eastern pacific so here we are looking at these two active tropical storms so that is max so previously known depression 16 has intensified into tropical storm max and it has actually strengthened while approaching the mexican coast so let's go on to the cone forecast we're seeing that it is not going to be lasting long as a tropical cyclone because it may dissipate by tomorrow but maximum sustained winds as of now are 50 miles per hour and it is moving up to the north at six miles per hour so it's not moving very quickly but uh, those tropical storm conditions will be bearing down on portions of southwest mexico uh, that heavy rainfall could trigger flooding and even mudslides as well especially in those hilly areas those areas of high terrain so uh, i hope that everyone will be okay throw this and also as you're going to be heading into tomorrow lydia will be bringing impact as well so the national hurricane center is expecting that the storm will manage to strengthen into a hurricane but it has weakened again uh we can see here that maximum sustained winds are 65 miles per hour it was at 70 and uh, it is moving to the north northeast at five miles per hour it will gradually move a bit faster as it makes its way to the northeast but uh, we can see that several areas are under those watches and warnings so highlighted in red is a hurricane warning which is in effect for las islas marias so there could be hurricane conditions as we head into the next 36 hours and then a hurricane watch that is in pink that is in effect for playa pervola to mazatlan and then a tropical storm watch that is in yellow is in effect for mazatlan to baya tempehuaya and manzanillo to playa perula so those areas are likely to experience tropical storm conditions within 48 hours so we can see here that they will be bringing these impacts the storm surge the heavy rainfall the gusty winds as well but the rainfall is the main concern with all that flooding the mudslides that are uh, going to be a problem so that is what is expected of lydia as we're going to be heading into tomorrow and even into early wednesday and eventually what is left of it could continue up to the northeast as i've been talking about for the past couple of days and with that new area which is marked in the gulf let's head over into the atlantic now so there we can see it uh, over the southern gulf the bay of campeche there we can see that 10 percent chance of formation now i'm not expecting anything to become of this area in terms of any uh, tropical cyclone development because of the wind shear let's look at the wind shear map here we can see those red lines uh so that shear is pretty strong across most of the gulf right now that westerly shear those strong upper level winds coming in from the west that is going to be helping to prevent any sorts of substantial development so i'm not expecting anything to become of the system and i mean it is only given a 10 percent chance of formation and then by the midweek it is likely to merge with a frontal system so i'm not expecting anything much to become of this year but uh for the caribbean though we can see that the shear is rather conducive we're seeing those green lines which indicate that favorable shear that is where tropical cyclones thrive uh, when they're trying to get themselves together trying to develop so uh, that's that let's move on to 92L here we can see it an 80% chance of development so the formation chance remains pretty high for this again as we head to the midweek it might manage to become a tropical storm let's go on to some model data and we're looking at the track guidance here we can see that all of these models are expecting that northwestward or that west northwestward track of the system eventually so uh, it is not expected to be a problem for the caribbean because there isn't a dominant high pressure area out there to steer it continually west and then going on to the model intensity guidance again we can see, uh, we can see that most models expect that it will make it to tropical storm status a couple of models want to take it up to a hurricane so uh even if it does become a hurricane again it's going to be out there in the open water 
surface of the Atlantic so that is highly likely as of right now so it's not going to be a problem for anyone and it will be uh, likely acquiring the next game for the season which is Sean. Now we want to go ahead and take a look at uh, the satellite imagery of the system here you can see it it is not so organized right now but it is trying to get there and it is producing quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity. Now we want to head into the vicinity of the Caribbean let's talk about what's happening here we can see that cluster of those showers thunderstorms in and around the vicinity of Jamaica so that tropical wave is moving through and producing these uh, periods of heavy rainfall uh, not just for Jamaica but also offshore we can see those little blobs developing here and there so as we head through today that is likely to be a possibility for the island these little blobs could develop here and there and uh, there could be some periods of heavy rainfall so I have been talking about this for some time now and it's not going to be the case for everywhere but some areas could experience some periods of very heavy rainfall and that may trigger flash flooding so that remains a possibility through today and uh, eventually that chance is going to continue to decrease as we head further into the week but as we look across other areas we can see that much isn't happening especially over in the east a bit of activity coming in from the main development region which may result in some passing showers across sections of the lesser Antilles even for the uh, Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico as well so as we head through today there might be some passing showers here and there overall that rainfall chance is not high for Hispaniola much not happening as we head down to Barbados Trinidad Tobago we're not seeing where anything much is happening either same story for the ABC Island so there is quite a bit of dry air over in the region so let's uh, go on to this dry air map and where we see more of these shades of oranges and reds that is indicating uh, that dense dry air so denser areas of dry air we can see that that is quite prevalent across the eastern islands of the Caribbean this morning now as it relates to rainfall activity through today again there could be some periods of heavy rainfall across portions of Jamaica and even up to Cuba and Haiti as well especially southern Haiti and uh, across Central America we are seeing that it is pretty colorful over there so there could be periods of heavy rainfall there uh, there as well especially as we head to this afternoon same story down in Colombia and in some spots across uh, Venezuela but as you can see down in the Guyanas much is not expected as per usual it's pretty dry that has been the trend and it has actually been forecast so I actually showed the uh, updates from the climate prediction center and that they were showing that there would be a decent chance of below average rainfall activity some drier conditions and that is exactly what we're seeing across the area but again as we head up to the leeward islands as I said there could be some passing showers as we head through to today and up into the Bahamas and even for some portions of South Florida there could be some activity later today as for the Turks and Caicos Islands much is not expected and going to the Cayman Islands if we should look to little Cayman and Cayman Brack we're seeing that uh, those islands are very close to those brighter colors which indicate more rainfall activity so maybe some heavy rainfall near the islands uh, maybe just offshore maybe if actually affecting the islands as we're going to be heading through today so that is going to be a possibility but we see that for Grand Cayman much is not anticipated. And so now I want to briefly talk about what is expected later this week. I'll go into a lot more details in a future update closer to the weekend. But on Saturday, the 14th of October will be an annular solar eclipse. Now, uh, this is going to be visible for the Caribbean and especially over in Central America. Some areas will be seeing the full thing. So I will be going into more details about what you'll see for different parts of the Caribbean and the time as well when it's to begin. So I'll be sharing more information information in a future update closer to the time or I might make a separate update and post it to my second channel weather extras either way I'll let you guys know what to expect so stay tuned for these future videos and that is pretty much it for now so I hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions as always please do leave them in the comments I'll respond to you once I can and remember to always be weather wise